The question is, which one of these two top rated running head torches am I gonna be using in my next ultra or for training from now on? What's up folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope you are all keeping fit and well and training hard. I'm still going through the whole rehab recovery process. If you haven't been following the channel, just over a week ago, I went over on my ankle, believe it or not, just road running, stepping up a curb, but that's the way it goes. And I've got a pretty nasty ankle sprain. I've been working super hard on the rehab of my ankle with a great sports physio, Paul Coker from Move Physio Cornwall. If you haven't checked out our last video where I went straight to Paul after the accident, got my ankle assessed and started the whole recovery phase, it's well worth checking out. You guys that have watched the last video really seem to enjoy Paul's words of wisdom. He's a great guy, really knowledgeable. So there's definitely gonna be more content featuring Paul on the channel very soon. But that's just a quick update to what's going on at Run For Adventure. But in today's video, we are taking a look at two heavyweights from the world of running head torches. So let's dive straight in. So the two head torches we are taking a look at in today's video are my go-to Petzl Neo Plus. I've been a big fan of the Neo head torches from Petzl's for a lot of years now. But we're also looking at the recently reviewed on the channel, the Fenix HM65RT. If you haven't seen the review of this head torch, I will leave a link in the description so you can go and check it out. Since reviewing the new head torch from Fenix on the channel, I've been asked a lot by viewers, which head torch would I use now in say a long ultra race? Would it be the new Fenix or would it be my go-to Neo Plus? This is a pretty hard question to answer if I'm honest because these are both great running head torches. So I thought the best way to answer this question is to do a comparison video on the channel. So let's give you a few facts and figures about these two great units. First up is price point for the two torches, the Fenex retails in the UK at £105, whereas the Petzl Neo Plus retails for £165. I'm sure if you looked around, this model's been out for some time now, you could probably find it a bit cheaper online. Both head torches are fully rechargeable and both come with rechargeable batteries. Weight of the head torches, the Petzl Neo weighs in at a very light 185 grams, but the Fenex at an even lighter 140 grams. As far as maximum output, per lumens brightness of the headlamp. This headlamp, the Neo Plus, will give you 750 lumens, so a nice bright light on maximum output. But the Fenex will give you a ridiculous 1,500 lumens on max power. Both head torches have a combination of spot and floodlights, so you'll get that nice spotlight to see far ahead, but you'll get a nice floodlight to see close proximity stuff when you're running on the trails. The Neo Plus has a waterproof rating of IPX4, whereas the Fenex has a rating of IP68. So this torch, believe it or not, can be submersed into two meters of water for 30 minutes. So very waterproof indeed for a running head torch. The Petzl Neo comes with this really handy red light feature on the battery pack of the head torch. So you can have a constant or a flashing little red LED light on the back. A great feature to have on your head torch because you haven't got to worry about it. And a lot of races are asking for that for mandatory kit now. Unfortunately, the Fenix doesn't have that red light feature. The Petzl head torch also has a great feature which is called reactive technology. So basically how that works on the Petzl head torch, we've got a little sensor up the top here and that will work with surrounding light. So if you have the torch set on reactive mode, if you're running in the pitch dark um, and you need to see a long way, this torch will give you full power. But then if you run with other head torch wearers or you run into a town or a village where there's street lights, this head torch will actually dull down and that's designed to give you an increased battery life or a longer burn time. Speaking of burn time, the burn time of the two torches with the Petzl on a maximum output of 750 lumens, with that reactive technology turned on, you'll get around six, six and a half hours of burn time. If you lower 
that brightness because this torch is fully customizable with a Bluetooth app, believe it or not. If you take that down to around the 300 lumens point, you'll get about 13, 14 hours of burn time using that reactive technology. So a really good long burn time on this torch or battery life if you set it up right using that Bluetooth app. When it comes down to the Fenex, you don't get uh, any Bluetooth app with this torch. It's a very simple torch in functions and capabilities, but to be fair, the amazing burn time of this torch, it doesn't really matter. So if you've got this set on full power, um, on spotlight mode of 1300 lumens, you'll get around four hours burn time, which is still pretty good considering the power of the light you're getting. If you drop that down to medium setting on 400 lumens, you will get a very impressive 12 hours of burn time on a very bright 400 lumens. You can buy replacement rechargeable batteries for both units, which is really handy because in most ultra races, you will have to carry a spare battery for your head torch. Or if you're going out on a long training run, you tend to want to carry um, a spare battery. And both torches come with a lock-in feature, which I think is very important to have on your head torches. So um, you've got this side toggle button, which also flicks you through your settings. But if you turn that all the way around to the little padlock there, you can see that on the torch there, that little padlock, that will lock off the functions of this torch. So there's nothing more frustrating than getting to a race or get into the night section of a race, reaching for your head torch, turn it on and it's run out of battery because the torch has turned on in your pack. So both torches have that lockable feature. With the Fenex, all you do is hold down the top two buttons for three seconds, the torch flashes and then buttons are locked off. So you're gonna have no accidents when transporting that head torch in your bag. So that is a few facts and figures and some of the features you get on these two great top of the range running head torches. But now we're gonna go through some of the pros and cons I've found using these two head torches and then we're going to wrap this video up with a quick conclusion and hopefully we'll answer that very tricky question of which of these two head torches am I going to use in my next ultra. So the first thing we're going to discuss when it comes down to these two units is price point of these head torches. So with the Fenex retailing at £60 less than the Neo Plus, although to be fair this is a much older model compared to the new Fenex and I'm sure if you looked around you could probably find some pretty good deals on this head torch which would bring them price is a lot closer but I think this Fenex torch is really good value for the spec that you get and the brightness of the light so when it comes down to price point for these two units the Fenex torch just takes it. Next up when it comes to important features on our head torches is the brightness of the light that is measured in lumens uh, and this really depends on the type of running you're going to be doing with your head torch if you're just going out around the streets of your town or village sticking to pavements you've got street lights then these two torches are probably a bit of overkill. If you just want a light that's gonna get you seen by cars, get you seen by pedestrians, and it's gonna help you down the odd curb or two, um, curbs, a bit of a touchy subject at the moment, so let's not talk about them anymore. These are probably a bit too powerful and something around the 200 lumen mark would probably do the job. But if we're gonna be using our head torch for some off-road adventures and hitting them trails at nighttime and moving at speed, then we're probably gonna want a bit more light than 200 lumens. I'd personally say sort of 300 lumens is a minimum requirement, especially if you're moving at speed in technical environments. What we've got to understand, the brighter, the more powerful that, that light is, is, it probably means the less burn time you're going to get on your battery. So when it comes down to the Petzl Neo Plus and battery life, with this torch set on full power, 750 lumens on constant, so it's just going to give you a constant 750 lumens, you're going to probably get about three hours of burn time. So pretty good for the amount of light, the amount of power it's giving out, but not really good enough if you're doing, say, a long ultra race and you're going to have to run through the night. So like I said before, with that clever reactive technology, uh, if you set the torch to reactive, you're probably going to double, if not a bit more, your burn time. So at 750 on that reactive, you'll probably get about six and a half half hours. What I tend to do is take that a step further. So using that really handy Bluetooth app feature, you can fully customize this torch. So what I normally do is I lower that max output to about 400 lumens. I lower the mid output to about 300 and the low output to about 200 lumens. With that setting on reactive technology, I've run this light and I've got sort of 10 to 12 hours of battery life. So a brilliant amount of burn time. That's probably why I've stuck with the Neo torches for so long because a long battery life 
just takes away so many issues and so many problems, especially if you're running for a long winter's night. Moving on to the Fenex HM65RT. Now this torch will give out an even more impressive max output of 1500 lumens, but in reality, you're probably only gonna get about two hours burn time from that incredibly bright light. And believe me, it is very bright. If you lower that torch, like I said before, down to 400 lumens, and the 400 lumens on this torch is very bright, and I think it's actually brighter than the equivalent on the Petzl torch, you will get that impressive 10 to 12 hours of burn time. In our full in-depth review of this head torch, we actually tested that burn time. So I set up a test, I put the head torch on that 400 mid mode. Um, we had a time lapse running, I left it running all night, and we got a, a good 10 or 11 hours on 400 lumens. The light started to dip at that time, but this torch was still going, it was giving out that sort of safety light, that emergency light for up to about 16 hours. So very impressive when it comes to battery life and burn time on this head unit. So as you can see, these two head torches are very impressive indeed when it comes to brightness, but also burn time or battery life. They both perform very, very well. What I will say is, it took me a while to get the settings right on the Petzl Neo. I had to play around with it to get that long burn time. It took me a few trials and a few tests to get it right. Um, I actually like the simplicity of this Fenex unit. Just clicking it to medium mode, 400 lumens is a great light and getting that 10 to 12 hours of burn time. But also if you need it, if you need to switch it up to 1300 or even 1500 using that dual light mode, the flood and the spotlight working together, it's so simple to do. It's such a simple torch to work through the features. So if you're running and you come to a super technical area, you just hit one button and you get that brighter light to see your way through. If you're lost in a field and you're looking for a style or a gate out of that field, crank it up to 1500 lumens and you're gonna find that gate, believe me. So I think when it comes to burn time, maximum output, the Fenix has to take it. I can't quite believe I'm saying it, but the features and the brightness on this torch have really impressed me. Next up, when it comes down to important features to look out for when it comes to choosing a head torch, especially if you're doing long ultra races and you might have this head torch on your head for several hours, is comfort. Now, when it comes to the Petzl Neo Plus, this torch has been extremely comfortable to wear over the years. Uh, I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that, yes, it is heavier than the Fenex, it's 180 grams, but because the light is on the front and the battery pack is split to the back, it spreads out that weight nice and evenly, so it's really well balanced. I have found in the past that head torches that have this sort of more strap, elasticated strap construction like you get on the Fenex can get pretty uncomfortable if you have to wear them for long periods of time. It can feel a bit constricting and almost like it's crushing your head and you can end up having a pretty bad headache from it. So this is an area where I thought the Petzl would win comfortably. <laughs> See what I've done there? But that really isn't the case. I have found this uh, Fenex head torch and the elasticated strap to be very comfortable on my head. Uh, I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that we've got this nice wide strap, so it distributes that weight a bit more evenly. And obviously we've got to take into consideration, even though the light and the battery up front, this is 40 grams lighter in weight. So um, a very lightweight to have on the front of your head. The fact we've got this nice wide strap and it has this really clever boa system, um, a brilliant idea to put this on a head torch and on the strap, very easy to adjust on the move so if you need to loosen it or tighten it very easy to do so while we're running so for this reason when it comes down to comfort of these two head torches I would be super super happy to wear either of these through even a long winter's ultra where you're having a head torch on your head for say 10 to 12 hours so it's definitely a tie when it comes down to comfort other features just to mention quickly, I think it's great that the Petzl comes with that red light feature that we mentioned before. Again, it just takes away that hassle of having to get a red light if it's part of your mandatory kit in a race. But to be fair to the Fenex, even though it doesn't have that red light feature, it's quite an easy fix nowadays. You can get them little uh, LED light clips from Ron Hill or other makes, and you can just clip one of them onto the back of the headband and job done. I think most of us would want to get a spare battery just in case of emergencies or if we needed it as part of our mandatory kit. So like I said earlier, when it comes to the Petzl unit, um, these spare batteries are pretty expensive, retailing at 65 pounds. I know you can definitely pick them up cheaper nowadays at around the 50 pound price point, but still 
pretty expensive for a spare battery. So when it comes to the Fenix unit, having them spare batteries at only 20 pounds, quite a big saving there. As far as charging the torches up, they both charge up pretty quick. I think the Fenix just about wins it. A couple of hours to full charge on the Fenix, which is very impressive. The only other thing when it comes to the batteries and charging the Fenix, you can only charge them batteries up um, in the torch. There's no other way of doing it. What I will say on their website, Fenix do sell uh, replacement rechargeable batteries that actually have a charging port in the battery. They're a little bit more expensive than the 20 pound battery, but a great little feature to have. So you just plug directly into the battery and you can charge it out of the torch. Right, I think we've pretty much covered everything when it comes to these two top of the line running head torches. So let's wrap this video up with a quick conclusion. So if you're in the market for a head torch just for a couple of runs a week running around the streets in your hometown you might think that these two head torches are a bit of overkill but what I will say is and I did this when I first started running at night I didn't do a lot of nighttime running so I went out and bought a head torch that was pretty cheap it wasn't that bright and it wasn't rechargeable either. I ended up really getting into my nighttime running, doing more runs throughout the week and running longer at night. And obviously what I found was that head torch wasn't capable of doing what I wanted it to do. One, it wasn't bright enough. And two, it was chewing through batteries and costing me a fortune. So I suppose what I'm trying to say is, Sometimes, you know, it's better off investing in our running kit and just buying once rather than buying several head torches leading up to this unit, which is a bit of a false economy. Obviously, if you are a super experienced trail runner that gets in lots of nighttime mileage or you're venturing into the world of ultra running and you're looking for that very bright, rechargeable head torch that's going to light up the trails ahead of you for long periods of time, then either of these head torches would be a great buy. I personally think if you bought either of these head torches to do that job, you'll probably never have to buy another running head torch. So that is a wrap on another video at Run For Adventure. I really hope, oh no, there's the, que the question, the whole point of this video, we need to answer the question. So the question is, which one of these two top rated running head torches am I gonna be using in my next ultra or for training from now on? Now, I think the answer is gonna shock maybe a lot of viewers. I know it shocked me and it shocked a lot of the people that I've run with, but I'm gonna to have to say the Fenix. This HM65RT has impressed me so much since we reviewed it on the channel how light it is, how comfortable it is, the brightness of this torch on full power, but also the brightness of this torch on 400 lumens. Definitely the brightest 400 lumens head torch I've ever used. And then you throw in that amazing burn time and just how simple it is to work your way through the torch and to use the functions as you're out running on the trails. Don't get me wrong, the Nao and the Nao Plus from Petzl are a great running head torches, you know, packed full of features, super bright, long burn time. So if if you are in the possession of one of these and you're running with one of these, is it worth spending out the money and upgrading to the Fenix? Probably not, you know, the Nao and the Nao Plus will get you through most running situations. But if you're in the market for a head torch because you're running further at night, you're doing more nighttime running, uh, top of your list are brightness. You want to have a super bright light to run in technical areas. You want a long burn time. You want the torch to be comfortable on your head for long periods of time. Then I would definitely recommend checking out the HM65RT from Fenix. So that really is a wrap for another video at Run For Adventure. Really hope you enjoyed it guys, hope you found it helpful. We have left links for both head torches in the description if you wanna find out any more information. Get involved guys, are you running in either of these head torches? How have you found the performance? Are you super impressed with the brightness of the Fenix torch? Or are you running with another brand of head torch that you feel performs better? Let us know in the comments below. So obviously super frustrating times at the channel not being able to run, but we are gonna continue to bring you guys content. We're gonna come up with new ideas and new ways of bringing you content while we can't run. I say it's frustrating because I'm sitting here and we've got things like this turning up, the new Kinvara 12 in this amazing future black colorway. Shoe looks awesome, feels amazing on the foot. We've also just got hold of the Tri Noosa 13 from ASICS. Again, another colorful shoe that feels great on. Can't wait to compare them two shoes together. Don't forget to follow us on our other social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, or Strava. If you've enjoyed the video, guys, hit that like button, give us a big thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's completely free, and it only takes a few seconds. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support 
support, especially over the last week. Your words of encouragement, words of positivity have been amazing. It's really helped. But for now, guys, stay safe and you guys keep on running.